Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and the success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm super excited and I'm honored for today's guest, Riley Dane. He is here with me on Making Bank. He is has this incredible movie documentary, documentary coming out called The Age of the Entrepreneur. I'm super pumped and excited because this fits exactly with who I am and with who you are. So Riley, I wanna welcome you to Making Bank. Cool, thanks for having me, man. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, for sure. So give us a little bit of background like on who you are, what you're doing, and kind of what got you here today. Yeah, for sure. So growing up, my dad was an entrepreneur, right? Okay. So I, I kinda, I caught that entrepreneur <clears throat> bug early and I know you started your first company, I think, was it 12, uh, 14? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was doing some stuff around 11 and 12. 14, I say, is when I start the real one. Right, so that but, was, yeah. I had a similar thing. So I had my first like little internet business at 14, right? That's cool. And so I did the, you know, the entrepreneur online stuff for a while growing up and then one day I was just kinda like, I don't know if this is what like really fulfills me, if this is like right. what my passion is. So I, I quit everything. Um, I came to LA, went to film school, got out of film school, and then I was like, all right, great. There's me and 10,000 other kids with a <laughs> film school degree. What am I gonna do that's gonna be different? Right. That whenever, like, what, how can I bring something unique to this? How am I gonna be the guy that makes the movie when the other 999 kids will never make anything? And so I kind of went back to those principles that I had learned growing up and doing online marketing, and I thought, what if I marry the two? What if mm. I make films, distribute them myself on the internet, and then just bring a bunch of value, build an audience, right. and then learn how to monetize it? And so, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm right now I'm making a film called Age of the Entrepreneur that I'm really excited about. And uh, we might just have a feature, someone <laughs> like you in the movie, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. Well, cool, so, um, <clears throat> so you kind of married the, Marketing with uh, making movies stuff, yeah. making movies. What um, I guess, what are some of the things that you you see, you said you applied some of the success principles that you learned about and everything. What were some of those principles that you learned that you used back then that you were applying today? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny because everything is similar. Whether you know, I think whether you're a singer, whether you're a filmmaker, whether you're an entrepreneur. In this climate, it's about creating an audience. Sure. You know I mean, if you have the audience, you can monetize it. If you have the audience, you can do something. Right. And so with film, I think the mistake that a lot of people make is they make something that's just too generic. It's it's like, you know, it's like it's like making a product that, okay. that isn't serving anyone. So I, I really tried to niche down and say, how can I make a film that's not just good, but it's serving an audience. It's right. solving a problem. Right. So with the entrepreneur film, it's like with you know AI and all these you know robots taking over jobs <laughs> and everything, it's really pushing people away from the traditional nine to five. And, sure. you know, and a lot of people are finding them in this place where the nine to five thing isn't working for them. Right. But then they don't know how to be an entrepreneur and do their own mm. thing. So it's like, how can mm. I go into that gap and make something that's right. entertaining and cool, but like give them some tools and strategies to help them on that journey. That's awesome. And it's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, I had shot a while back a couple of years ago, just kind of like a side project, I guess you could say it was, but it was for people that helps them get the side hustle on and it kind of teaches them like, hey, here's how you get out and do it. Here's how you yeah. take those little steps. You know, while you're working that nine to five, how, you know, how do you get out of where you are today and move yourself forward? And one of the guys um, that I interviewed along the path and who had a really good story was John Lee Dumas and how he went from being stuck in his cubicle after the military and just nine to five and hating it, but then started doing this on the side and how he, you know, was able to get out from underneath that. Now he's living in, you know, Puerto Rico. Yeah, and yeah, Puerto I was Rico. just like, wait a minute, I never removed. So Puerto Rico and San Diego some and, you know, and just has this great setup that he's built for himself over the years. And so I think a lot of people get stuck, like you mentioned, in, okay, well, I'm doing this and I just don't know how to get out of this same loop and everything. And so what have you found that has worked that you've been able to talk and teach people on? Yeah, so I think that's the thing is like, <clears throat> what are you going to be able to do that not everyone else in the world can do? How are mm -hmm. you going to be different? How are you going to be unique? And I think that's the fastest way to getting stuck, you know, if you're stuck in that nine to sure. five. Because everyone, you know, they see the success. So they go, okay, Gary V. This right. is what he's doing. Why I'm just gonna make you know a thousand content videos a day, and it's like if that's not your thing, 
then don't do that thing. Find sure. the thing that you're good at. So like I could have, you know, I could have tried to solve the same problem I'm solving right now by doing, you know, a daily vlog, right? right? Like a thousand other mm -hmm. people. But instead my passion is filmmaking. So I tried to fill that gap with what I think I'm good at or what I, mm. at least what I love. Right. So I, I tried to inject that. And so I think it's just really find the thing that you're not only good at, but find the thing that is unique that the world still needs. There's a bunch of Gary Vee copycats, but how many filmmakers are there, right? There's a lot right. of great podcasters yeah. like yeah. yourself, but how many, you know, Josh Felber copycats are there? Right. right. So it's like, go do the thing that you're... Maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So Maybe yeah, none. <laughs> go, yeah, go do, go do, go do, your, go do right. your thing. What's the thing that you can fill the gap that no one else is filling right now? Sure. And no, and you know, I think that was interesting that, you know, finding that spot and everything and... I know at least initially, especially for me, is when I've gone in different businesses, I owned, like one of the businesses I owned was uh, multiple CrossFit gyms. and But when we went into it, uh, this was like early, mid-2010, and it's like, okay, how can we be different than what everybody else is out there? Almost kind of like the Blue Ocean strategy yeah. and everything. But, you know, but people, you know, want it. And so we said, okay, we're going to totally do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. They're part-time, they work other jobs that own these CrossFit gyms and everything else. They they're small. All right, we're going to go larger. We're going to have all the equipment for people. We're going to be there the most hours. Yeah. And, you know, within uh, 18 months, we were almost at a seven-figure run rate and stuff. And, and, you know, and there was a lot of competition still yeah. around. And we were two and a half to three times the price of everybody else. Oh, wow. More. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think going and finding that area is, you know, what people are doing and doing it different and doing it better, yeah. you know, is a huge thing. Um, I'd like to dive in a little bit. I don't know how much you can divulge in the movie yet yeah, without yeah. spoiling it all, yeah. but I'd like to dive in a little bit about that and what um, you're finding from interviewing all these amazing entrepreneurs and you know where you know where you see this whole because it's kind of like an entrepreneur craze or this yeah, yeah, yeah. popularity thing that's happening right now and you know and but is it just that or is that the way this tide is shifting from you know, going to school, working, in, you know, then getting out, working in a factory, right. working in nine to five, is the tide shifting to, hey, you know, going to school, learning, learning how to operate and run a business mm -hmm. and then doing that? Right. No, I think that's a really good question because there is always, you know, the drawback of, is this just popular because it's cool? Right. Right. Is it like, is everyone just doing it to get those Instagram followers so they can, sure. you know, post the motivational quote, take the picture of themselves, be like, you can do it, trust the hustle, hashtag <laughs> hustle. And it's like, are you doing this? And it kind of goes back to my other point. Like, is this the thing that you're really passionate about? Or are you doing mm -hmm. it just because everyone else thinks it's cool? But for me, you know, talking to all these entrepreneurs and talking to even just people on the street, it's funny. I went down Hollywood Boulevard and shot a part for the movie and I said, I asked everyone, uh, do you like having a boss or would you rather be your own boss? And a hundred percent of people said they would want to be their own boss. Wow. So even people that, you know, were in jobs, you know, they were yeah. in management, they had good spots. Everyone, their preference was still, still that. being their own boss. Sure. Because I think, you know, if, you know, if, if you can be your own boss and still make money and live a good life, that's clearly better <laughs> than having a boss telling you what to do. Right. And so I think now the gap is the, Climate has shifted and culture has shifted. The nine to five era is kind of dying. The, you know, the age where it's like, you just got the diploma. You were guaranteed the good job. Right. You oh, bought yeah. the house with the white picket fence. Like that doesn't exist anymore. You right. Know? Oh there, yeah. There's fewer and fewer companies. More and more companies get disrupted. That's the other thing. So it's For like, sure. okay, even if say you, you, you get the diploma and you get the good job, right? Yep. Everyone thought Blockbuster was a surefire thing. You're like, I'm going to retire here. You wake <laughs> yeah. up Monday morning, suddenly. They're all closed. Yeah. yeah. So I think with just how fast everything is shifting, the safest, most secure place you can be is to be an entrepreneur, is to create your own thing, is to build your own empire that no one else can take away right. from you. And I, so I, although I do think it's a little bit trendy just for the Instagram thing, I think as a whole, culture is understanding that and it's, it's a really cool, progressive thing that I, I'm happy to see. So an interesting thing that kind of just led me to a new thought was, and, I ha and it, part of it has happened, I see it, I was looking at social and I saw a big, thread of Q and A going and stuff. Do you think that we're born with entrepreneurial traits or can we learn this to be entrepreneurs? Yeah, that's a really good question. That's funny. That's a question I've asked in my documentary. And so <laughs> what I have found is that it's 50-50. That's what okay. people say when I ask other people. Interesting. About half people say it's something you're born with. 
half of people say it's just something that you can learn and I would have never been an entrepreneur, but then something happened. I think right. even Tom Bilyeu uh, said he, he was not a born entrepreneur. Right. He, he learned how to do it. And so to me, looking at the entrepreneurs I've spoken to, I think it's a mix of both. I think people are born with certain characteristics or at least, you know, in those formative years, you know, like they always sure. say like the majority of your personality is built from like one to seven, right? right? So what were the traits that you were given? What was baked mm -hmm. into you at that age? And I think some people just have a, a predisposition to be able to jump into that entrepreneurial game so much easier. Right. Whereas if, if you were born with, you know, just a little bit of a different angle where your parents were really about security and it's not taking risks sure. and it's about playing the safe game, I think it's harder for those people mm. to take that jump. But I think almost no matter what, like we see entrepreneurs in Africa, right? right. Like oh, there, yeah. there are people that have their, their cell phone connects them to the internet and they're able to build a business. So sure. to say that you have to be born with a certain set of ingredients or you can't do it, I don't think that's true. Right. But I, so I, I, th I think there's a few things that help you along the way, but I think really anyone can be an entrepreneur. Yeah, that is interesting. I think, and like you mentioned too, is I, I think it probably comes a lot from our environment of what yeah. we're brought up in is like what you were mentioning. because you know, and that relentlessness, that drive, the, the, the toler, you know, tolerance for risk. Yes. Because that's one of the things like for me over the years, I never like opened up a business and thought, oh, it's going to fail. Some, a lot of them did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other ones didn't, but it's not, it wasn't like, oh, I'm worried about this. And is it going to, you know, yeah. I never even crossed my mind, you know, whereas, you know, I've talked to other people and they're like, wow, how do you do this? And you're like, I just be so worried of this mm -hmm. and this and this. And, you know, and it's just, I like that, that fear or that thought of failure never would cross my mind. And I, and I don't know if that's just how the environment that I was brought yeah. up in, you know, and so it just never resonated like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to worry about that right. or anything. So, um, so what are maybe things? three really cool insights that you've picked up from interviewing all these amazing entrepreneurs. Yeah, so, I mean, there are so many trends and so many <laughs> ideas that you see time and time again, and then you start to be like, oh, it's no wonder you're successful. Like, right. when, I, when I asked you this question, I already know what you're gonna say, because the other 22 <laughs> people answered the same way. Sure. Um, but I think three big takeaways for me, um, the first one might be passion. And I think passion sometimes gets a bad rap because it's like sure. a lot of people say like, don't follow your passion, follow the money, right? Like I, I hear that a lot. But there was an interview with Steve Jobs um, sometime before he passed and he said, passion is important because it gives you the hustle and the drive on the days when a normal person would give up. Mm. But if you have passion, you're gonna power through that day when if you didn't have passion, that's the day you would give up and call it quits. Sure. But if you're so fired up and passionate about it, it just gives you the extra push to keep going. And that's why I think that's just such a, an important ingredient in being an entrepreneur because For sure. you, you know, if, if the first road bump you hit, you give up, you're never gonna make it. You know, right. as, as you know, you, you're gonna plow through like 12 roadblocks before you finally get to where you're trying to get <laughs> yeah. to, if you get there. And so I think passion, huge ingredient. So that's the first thing. Mm. Um, the second thing is, solving a problem and helping people. Okay. And it was, I think I was talking to T. Harv Ecker, uh, who wrote Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And he said, when I do my seminars, I'll ask people, how many here want to help a lot of people? He said, everyone puts up their hand. <laughs> and he says, how many people here want to be really, really rich? Everyone puts up their hand. And he's like, well, perfect. Because that's the only way that you will ever get rich. Because the only way that you get money is you get it when you help somebody solve a problem. Mm. So whether it's about, you know, inventing a better, you know, Starbucks coffee mug. You still right. help somebody drink their coffee better. So it could be that small or your Elon Musk saying, let's let's make better cars. Let's make let's sure. cut down on fossil fuels. Like let's change the way energy is played. Right. So either way, whether it's this small little micro thing, I even if it's a snuggie, you know what I mean, where it's like, are you the type of person that wants to lay there with a blanket but still have your arms out? We're going to solve your problem. Right. <laughs> um, either way, no matter what you're doing as an entrepreneur, if yep. you are successful and if you're making money, you're in some way solving a problem. You're in some way helping people. Um, so I think that's cool, especially in today's climate, because in the past, I don't know if it was like really cool to want to be, you know, really like give away money and do these things. And it's like, you can just bake that into what you're doing, you know, right? right? Like the core of your business can be about your primary motivation is to help people, help them solve a problem. And for doing that, you're going to get money back. For sure. So it's a really cool, you know, symbiotic relationship there. 
It was interesting, one of the interviews, I was talking to somebody and they were telling me how Tom's had given away so many pairs of shoes that the areas that they were giving away so many pairs of shoes were putting the shoe stores out of business because of their model. Right. So they had to change it up a little bit. So yeah. instead of like one for one, now it's like a certain percentage or right, whatever right, right. gets donated you. and stuff. And they weren't trying to do it to be malicious. They were trying to do it to help people. Right. And it ended up, <laughs> I mean, it ended up doing both. Yeah. But yeah, you know, and so, um, yeah, so like I said, ba like you said, baking in your cause or what yeah. you're doing to help others, you know, in what you should do is definitely important. And I think we're seeing a lot of that kind of changing that direction yes. as b new businesses roll out and um, different strategic ways to align, uh, align with. Um, I had talked with one person and they talked about how they were, had this model of give back and then like they would get buy stuff at a certain price but then show hey here's what the markup is mm -hmm. and you can buy it for this price and but it just to me it just didn't make sense because i'm like well but you gotta have enough margin to operate and run your yes. business and all this and you gotta you still gotta make money to live and all this kind of a thing and it was interesting because when we released the show because we run i don't know six months on average behind with shows right we have yeah. so many recorded is when i went to release it they were out of business. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was like, huh, well, right. that was quite yeah. interesting how that worked out. And so I think it's a double-edged sword. Yes. Is that you have to be able to make, you have to make a profit and you got to make, generate revenue to also give back. Yes. And so I think that's the key is where if your product itself can be the thing that helps somebody. Right. Right. Then, then you can, you can check both boxes. Mm, yes. Right. So then, whatever you're selling is solving that problem and helping them. For sure. And then, if you also want to, you know, bake in the, the you know, the to, the Tom shoe, the buy one give right. one, or put, you know, ten percent back. That's all super cool. But that can be extra on top of what you're already doing. Doing, yeah, yeah. to help people. Cool. So um, let's see. Was that two things? That, yeah, those two. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think yeah, a third would be you know a concept that you hear a lot about, but I think it's really important, and that is. The, the fail forward okay. idea and embracing failure and that's something that I didn't understand. Okay. Really, like I heard it growing up where it's like, sure. you know, failure is what makes you strong. It's like, we, we fall down so we can learn to get back up. And I saw it was like, I was like, this is stupid. Like I, I'd rather just not be failing and that would be fall. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now as I get older, I really, I, I'm starting to understand the concept and doing this film and hearing so many people reiterate it because I used to just see failure as I tried to do something and it didn't work, so therefore it's bad. Sure. But now I know, okay, I tried to do something, it didn't work, which means I've learned one way that it will not work, which means I'm one step closer to finding the way that it will work. Mm. So even though it can sometimes look like you're going backwards, to me failure is always, you know, that staircase. So right. every time that you learn one way not to do something, that inherently means that you are one step closer to finding the correct Find way the to right do way the to thing. Do it. <laughs> so I think failing forward is huge. Like embrace failure, sure. keep going, fail as much as you can because if you're failing, that means that you're you're pushing hard. You're trying to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. It's easy to stay in what you know, but like you're not gonna grow. You're not gonna right. grow yourself. You're not gonna grow as a business. So push until you fail. When you fail, pivot and try again and do something and yep. really and really push forward, fail forward. I think it's huge. That's awesome. What um, so. So those are some of the different success ideas. Yeah. How about from a, like, have you seen, and I'll bring this up. So um, one gentleman I interviewed, he talked about the differences from like millionaires and billionaires. Right. So what have you found that kind of separates that level? Yes, that's an interesting thing. I was actually just talking about this the other day. And so obviously I'm not a billionaire. <laughs> So, we're, I'm just, we're just talking about interview. Yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm not either, but it's yes. just so, from a response. So. Yes, but from looking at it from afar, um, what I can see is that, you know, being a billionaire, it takes, that might be something that's more of that genetic thing that we're talking about. Like, you're going to need something that's not normal, that most normal people don't have. Like, I think I was reading Elon Musk's biography, and I could be kind of wrong on the right. story, but I believe what it was is like, he grew up in South Africa. Right. And... By the time he was like, let's say it was like seven or eight, he had like read like every book in the library because he has a photographic memory. And like the library had to like ship in more books for him to read. <laughs> I was like, that's not normal. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, right. no matter what, and I think, you know, it's the same thing where it's like, I'm a five, nine 
white guy. I'm not going to be the best basketball player. Like sure. I'm not like there's a certain limitations to just how you were born right. that I think like I could be really good, but am I going to be the best player on the best team? Probably not. The same way even intellectually, how we're born with certain traits, Elon Musk was born with an advantage to become a billionaire. Okay. Whereas like does my int- I don't have a photographic memory. I've never right. went to a library and read every single book. <laughs> so I think, you know, there is that distinction. Um, so I would say that might be the main one. I think the, the real big one between millionaires and billionaires might just be what are those intrinsic characteristics that you can't control Right. that, that really comes into play to take that leap. At least that, that, would, that would be my stab at it. Interesting. I think. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure how if you guys got into any discussions in that yeah. throughout the movie and stuff. And was able to pick apart, you know, some ideas in that because it's just fascinating from the different books I've read and different interviews. Yeah, what people look at, and um, you know, even it's just like how they look at opportunities yes. and how what the opportunity means to them, and how there's a certain way they look at opportunities compared to somebody that's just looking to make more money. Right. And so. Yeah, and I think that's fair because it's even like, let's say with Elon Musk's specific personality type, right? right? At minimum, there's, let's say, a 1,000, 10,000 other kids that were born at the same time sure. that had the same capabilities Elon Musk had. Right. Why is he the guy that has Tesla and the other 9,099 kids don't? So it's like there is some inherent thing, but at the end of the day, it, it's choice, and it is you know <laughs> being the, the braver one to take the leap when the other people won't. Take the risk, yeah, yeah for sure. Cool. What, um, anyway, we got a few minutes left. Yeah. What are some, like, insights that you're like, man, this is just something that I've picked up over the years or something that just resonated in me through from film school to my dad being an entrepreneur and, you know, that you just really wish people would know and that you just got to get off your chest and tell them. Yeah, I think it's not a fun or sexy answer, but it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard work. Is Hard work is the fastest way to get to where you want to go. And that was another thing that I didn't like as a kid at all, at all. It was hard work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to be fun. Yeah. That's what's like, I, I think I was like 16 and I read like the four hour work week. Oh, right. And I was like, okay, there's, and I love that book still, but it, I had this belief where I'm like, there's shortcuts to everything. And it's like, there's working harder and working smarter. So I can just, you know, work smarter than I don't have to work that much. No, 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 no. You work smart and you work just as much as the people working hard. Right. So you still put in the 12 hours a day. You just do it smart. Yep. So what you do in a day, it might take somebody else in a week. For sure. But you, you really have two choices. You can take it slow and work two hours a day, and it's going to take you a decade. Or you can take it fast, and you can work the 12 hours a day, and it's mm. going to take you a year or two years or three years. Right. But I think there's, there's no shortcuts. No matter how smart you are, no matter how smart you're working, hard work is the fastest way to succeed. And it was an idea that I didn't want to embrace. I wanted the shortcut. I wanted it to be easy. But as I grow up and as I've seen these people succeed, that's just, that's the truth. Cool. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about the whole encompasses of the movie. Yeah. And it's releasing this year in 2019 yes. here shortly. And so give us a little quick blurb on that and why people should definitely go watch it. Yeah. So the, the film, as we mentioned, is called Age of the Entrepreneur. And basically I've traveled around the world talking to some of the biggest, most influential entrepreneurs on the planet. You know, we have some social media superstars. We have some phenomenal podcasters. We have some, you know, billionaire entrepreneurs that are doing some crazy, crazy things. Um, but really it's a movie that I made to help inspire people mm. to become entrepreneurs. And I think that there are so many people out there that are hungry for this, but they just don't know the steps. So I wanna give them something that they can watch. And after they're done watching it, they're gonna have some tools and strategies to go out there and you know build something really epic. That's cool. No, that's awesome. I'm excited to see it. And you know, just really appreciate your insights, what you've been able to teach, you know, the make our making bank audience and absolutely um, just your insights. And again, I really appreciate your time today and coming on the show. For sure. Thank you for having me. Cool. I am Josh Felber. You are watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary.